Okay, so I went to Toys R Us yesterday. I had to take my mom to the dentist. So I was able to quickly stop by and they had, uh, these were behind the counter. They don't even put them out in the Toys R Us that I was at. And I was talking to the, well, there was a lady there and another guy there, you know, the workers at Toys R Us. And they were just saying uh, how these all sell out. And these were the last, uh, there was three, there was three or four left. Um, there was like two R2-D2s and two uh, C-3PO's, no, one C-3PO. So there was like three figures left, or no, four figures. I think there was like four figures they had left, but uh, they were all selling out. So anyways, I wanted to grab another R2 because the R2 I bought off of eBay, which, uh, you know, had a dent on the corner. So I wanted to get another one just to have a more mint on card one for 20 bucks, who cares, right? So I was gonna buy another R2, or sorry, C-3PO, but you know, they were selling out. There was some guy, they were like, oh, one of their buddies was coming or something to buy, uh, you know, the last uh, couple of them there. So they seem to be selling out like crazy where I'm at. Um, and uh, yeah, there's some C-3PO's and R2's seem to be around, but they're clearing out pretty fast too. So I recommend uh, getting these figures unless, uh, you know, more of them come on the pegs, but it doesn't matter. I'd get, uh, you know, I wouldn't mind getting another Boba Fett, but I, the only reason I left the C-3PO there was because uh, they had less C-3PO's left, actually. Uh, this is also kind of a response to John Rulla's latest uh, video there at uh, Action Figure Grader. I thought he had some, you know, it was a great, uh, you know, what happens if there's no TVC line, but uh, I don't know. I mean, it's, uh, you know, if they, if, if Hasbro was stupid enough to do that, you know, I think the problem with Hasbro is you got like the Mission Fleet stuff, you've got TVC, you know, the 3375, and then you've got way too much Black Series, where everywhere I go, Black Series is just crowding the pegs. And I think they just sort of overproduce it in a way. And I don't know, if you, if you look at uh, the original part of that line, Retro Blasting did a great video kind of summarizing, uh, you know, what, uh, you know, the Black Series was supposed to be like this definitive line. Now, I collect Black Series, you know, when I can. Um, right now, I'm more concentrating on TVC going forward. Um, I do like the Black Series because, you know, you get a six inch figure. They're great for like if you're just putting them on a shelf and a display. But, um, you know, it is a spatial issue where more effort goes into 375, you get, you know, I mean, the detail that you're getting on these uh, figures is, uh, you know, when, when it comes to world building, you know, if more focus was just primarily on the 375, you know, like they could be really, uh, you know, sometimes they're outdoing the Black Series uh, six inch figures. And, you know, I keep seeing a lot of people forget the main reason why they did the, the uh, you know, this, the six inch T black series line is because Hasbro makes more money off them. Right. So, you know, I mean, don't kid yourself. I mean, th that is, you know, corporations are all about, you know, they're just inherently about making the money. Now, obviously there are human beings that work in these companies and there's going to be some internal pressures. And of course the market in the end decides. So, you know, the thing is with the 375, it harkens back to obviously the original Kenner. And, you know, you get the nice uh, package art where it's like you get a nice thing like this. You put it on the wall. You can put a lot of them on the wall. Um, you could possibly have even smaller card backs, you know. And they, I've kind of wondered that on in regards to the Mission Fleet stuff where even though that's purely for a much more of a child line completely um because you know they have you buy a vehicle or whatever and it shoots a projectile off of it which is you know something gimmicky for kids and uh they love it you know i bought uh, a couple of those for my son's or my my friend best friend's uh kids and uh you know it's kind of an experiment there but like they open up the mission plates and they liked them but they liked the three seven fives too right and uh you know, I gave uh, his older son, he's about seven, a Millennium Falcon. And, 
you know, it's just like, I don't know who does, like, who's doing the marketing and stuff like that for, uh, for kids and that, but oh my God, they're totally missing the, uh, they're missing how to sell it to kids, man. Like, and I, and I see like, uh, a lot of channels like Bosk's Bounty and that everyone keeps saying, well, you know, kids, they don't play with action figures. That's completely, nothing against Tim, but I totally disagree with that. I think it's 100% the parents and I've seen it. Uh, especially my sort of generation and younger, they get kit, they have their kids and they hand them an iPhone. And I remember seeing this, you know, you know, in my line of work since, you know, I deal with, the, you know, a lot of families and that, you know, their kids are always running around, you know, my, my way, but I get it too. I mean, me, I would, I want to hand something to the kid, kid runs away, goes and plays, you know, it's like, leave me alone, <laughs> you know, uh, but they don't parent, right? So they hand them an iPhone, they hand them, they get them on a computer game because I think it's almost like an an, an out for the parents too, right? Because then they can go concentrate on, you know, where the kid's just staring at a TV. Whereas when we grew up, yeah, we had uh, Nintendo was, uh, you know, first it was Atari and then television and game systems like that. But, you know, I was a part of that era too, where it really got out of control, where it's just like kids eventually would just spend hours of their day playing video games all the time. And I remember as, as a kid, like we would have almost like, not fights about it, but peer pressure where it's like, come outside, let's run around in the, in the forests and stuff like that. And, um, you know, so that was a big part of it. And we used to, you know, we'd play with the, you know, with the Star Wars toys and, uh, Myself, I was different because I would always, uh, I would always take care of my stuff, right? And then eventually, you just wanted them more on display, right? And then as time went on, you looked at the old Kenner figures, and you know when they weren't realistic enough. Where all this new stuff now, I mean, they're literally works of art, you know. I mean, the, obviously, the the old uh, original seventy eight to eighty five figures are extremely cool, but that's why we liked the card backs, right? And back then, it wasn't, uh, you know, for the prequel generation and going forward, Generation Z, you didn't have, uh, you didn't have the access. Internet was dial up in the 90s. I was on it. You know, I mean, like, it was a totally different sort of world. So it's like when you, that's why people would get magazines. Like, you'd go down to the convenience store and you'd, you'd get a... A magazine right and you'd have to you have to wait months to get in. the transfer information was so much more slower and the thing is with uh, video games you know and just doing all the online stuff which is extremely cool you can't fault the kids for doing that but those are factors and a lot of it I think has to do you know it's the convenience right and I think parents do it because it's um, you know it's just like eh, you know kid just goes and sits on a video game they don't have to parent as much right you know and then ever and then you look at households today you know you got two people working where you know unfortunately i think it's making in some ways i think it's making things worse but anyways my experiment this year in a way like i, I gave some other of these uh figures to some of my other cousins and stuff like that you know some of the tvc you know, just to kind of see how they like it. Some, you know, there were boys, girls, right? And uh, I found it extremely interesting, their reactions. They thought it was really, but a lot of it wasn't introduced. And one thing I noticed, a lot of the parents said, I, for example, and I had this a couple times, because, you know, when it's Christmas time, you know, in my business, you know, I bring, give bottles of wine, things like that. And, you know, they have kids, I'll bring something sometimes, you know? And I've been, and this year I specifically concentrated on the Star Wars. I, I also, you know, I guess in some some ways, you know, it's uh, I wanted to see what the reaction was going to be, and I found that uh, the reaction from the parents was like, man, I never. They they said I never really thought about getting you know them really this stuff, but the kids were completely playing with them, running around the rooms, the video games stopped, you know. Um, you know, I gave them some stormtroopers. A lot of them were like Power of the Force, and uh, some of them were sort of a little later. Like I gave uh, some one of them uh, the four pack. It was one of the original four packs of stormtroopers I bought back in like 2002, just before I kind of quit uh, collecting. And 
you know, just, you know, just to see, you know, experiment, right? See? And they were totally playing with them. So, I mean, like, I don't know, it, it totally, it introduced them into Star Wars and they were immediately sold, you know? One thing I will say, I find the prequel films have less of a pull on the kids for various reasons, which I don't want to get into now. And the sequel trilogy uh, has virtually no pull. It's only a bit of a, it has some pull with some sort of casual type fans or people that have just stayed loyal to the IP no matter what. But that's another key factor in regards to, uh, you know, John Rulla's latest video of what happens if there's no TVC or they get rid of the plastic bubble. Um, there's something that's the visual parts of it. And it, it even goes to the original films, I find, where they had, there's like a realism to the original films, you know? And I think a lot of that's been kind of lost in the, uh, the films that have come since then. I mean, they kind of got a bit of it back in some ways. Um, like the CGI was a lot better, obviously, in, in the recent uh, films. But, um, you know, obviously the, the recent films were the worst, you know, as far as from a, a film perspective and storyline. It's just horrendous. <clears throat> you know, it totally abandoned, you know, all the archetypes that the, that the trilogy was originally based on. You know, they broke every rule in there. It's just or even if you want to call it rules or rules of realism or rules of, you know, just old truths that have been around for, you know, millennia did not, were not represented properly and the films are not represented at all. You know, if you study Greek mythology, things like this, um, just ancient myths, like the way legends are made, the way, you know, real character development is done. And you've also saw that in Game of Thrones where they totally... You can see once the directors didn't have any scripts from uh, uh, George R. R. Martin anymore because he was behind on the writing. You see, once they took the horns, you could see that they actually were just completely talentless writers that I don't know what the heck they did in university, but, you know, they just, it's just, they're, you know, it's, it's like there's no, dis they've given up all the discipline and all the work that gets you to these certain positions. And when you, you know, it's just like, you can't skip over things because eventually, yeah, you can, you know, you never did the work. It's like you get the video game code to get to level 10 or whatever to fight Mike Tyson, but you don't even know how to use the, you know, you're just going to get knocked out. And I think that's kind of the analogy, which I find with uh, modern Hollywood. But uh, anyways, uh, I'm ranting here, but anyways, I was able to pick this up. These are selling out. It's all the old school type of collectors, a little bit of a slight ding there, but uh, good enough for me. I imagine this is probably an 85 at least. The bubble looks perfect, so good enough for my display, whatever. It'll sit on my wall till I'm dead. And, uh, you know, I just couldn't resist not getting another one of these. I did want to get another FET. Uh, the FET I do have is pretty much, uh, pretty close to mint. Well, it does, I think it had a little bit of a, a scrape or something very minor. But uh, anyways, I'm just happy to get these because I passed on on these uh, figures. They weren't really wild, wildly available back in uh, the 80s. Um, I mean, they were around, but I just, you know, I remember when I saw them, I was just like, you know, I guess I just throw sort of a temp, you know, I was like five years old, right? So... I was just like, I wanted the, you know, the Return of the Jedi packaging, you know, I just didn't fully, you know, and these were the cartoon, which I sort of liked, but then mostly kind of hated at the time because I wanted more real, uh, you know, real life film than I just didn't want the cartoon as much. Right. But even though this cartoon is actually, uh, you know, in my opinion, actually now watching it again, it's actually five stars. I think it's pretty damn good for for kids and like, you know, there's the artistic side to it. And that's another reason why we get, um, that's why the reason why I like the card backs, right? I mean, that is just, that's fantastic, right? But anyways, there it is. There's my long rant. I think there's some of the explanations that I've noticed myself and uh, maybe that gives a little more light. But I think to sum it up though, it, it really is more the parents because it's 
When they say only adults buy these, it's always been adults that have bought these, right? It's always been it. Like when I was a kid back in the eighties, I begged my dad to get the toys, right? Where now it's like, from what I've seen of parents, like I was in Toys R Us that day and I saw a lady there buying, you know, and a lot of times it's like they're buying what they want for their kids. They're not actually buying uh, what the kids want to. I kind of noticed that too, but uh, which is weird, but uh, I don't know. I guess it's just sort of the generational thing, but is it able to, or is Hasbro able to break through that? 100%, I just think they're not doing a good job in the marketing and they're not uh, engaging uh, kids and stuff like that. And there's a lot of things that Hasbro and these toy companies could be doing if they want to maintain their market share and actually start reversing a lot of this. Because personally, I think video games are great, but I think stuff like this is far more important than video games because it gets kids to use their imagination where the world isn't always created for them. But, you know, maybe there's even, you know, sort of sinister uh, reasons for it too. It's, you know, when you, you kill the imagination of kids, so they, they can't think, they can't, you know, innovate in their minds or you can't have dreams where everything's just sort of laid out for you. You know, I think there's repercussions in that too, right? But uh, interesting. I don't know. There's just some theories that I have. Yeah, it's probably BS, but anyways, there it is. In the words of the great BOE, cheers. Goodbye.